What's up, Chuckers? Welcome to Catch This Podcast. Uh, today we've got a special guest with us, Fowler. Hello. Do you want to say a little bit about yourself? Uh, I'm Zachary Fowler, Fowler's Makery of Mischief. Kind of became, uh, I don't know, something on YouTube after winning History Alone uh, on the History Channel. After 87 days surviving alone in Patagonia and uh, decided to become a YouTuber after that with my winnings. Half a million dollars on the show and... Uh, and uh, fallen in love with slingshots because of the show. Because uh, I watch people go out and survive in all these survival shows and never manage to shoot anything with their bows. And I thought, hey, what about uh, slingshots? If I bring a slingshot, I can uh, use it to survive. And uh, that began my whole love with chucking things at uh, wild game and uh, hunting and surviving and making YouTube videos. So do you have much experience with using a sling? I know that you did... Quite a number of years ago, a video comparing the slingshot and staff sling, but what about the hand sling? I, I had it in my pocket for a while um, before I, like years earlier and stuff where we'd, you know, go out at break time and stuff like that. And I would be like chucking rocks in the parking lot and I never got all that good with it. And um, after using the staff sling that day in that video, I had so much power, I, I kind of like stopped using it and I was really into the slingshot so i just like i focused just on that one thing but um after you guys messaged me the other day i started thinking about it again and it's like i gotta stop carrying one again and like i was gonna make like a wrist one or something so i could just like because i take the girls to the beach and it's like that is so much more viable to just something to play around with and have fun with while they're doing their thing and uh the slingshot the shooting rocks isn't all that fun because they're not that accurate but a heavier stone with a sling, you can get pretty darn accurate. That's great to hear that we've uh, got uh, Fowler thinking about slings here. So I, I saw you said you had to take your dog out this morning. Does your dog fetch? Not so much just yet, but <laughs> I just got her. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> well, um, so I've I've got something for you. I, I've, I'll drop it in your uh, P.O. box. It should be nice. coming in a, in a week or so. Curious what you think of it, but it's basically, it's a sling that's specifically designed for throwing tennis balls. It's a great one that you can just shove in your pocket and play fetch with a dog or catch with the girls or whatever. My my kids love them. Nice. I'll get one of those in the mail to you just to say thanks for coming on our show. That's perfect. That'll be fun. All right. So, so you've, you've got a little bit of time with the, the sling and you've, they've, it's obviously been in, in your consciousness. I know you, you've on your YouTube channel, you've launched things from things uh, in all sorts of ways. You have know, blowguns and bows and slingshots, obviously. So what's my favorite? <laughs> I guess that one's kind of obvious though, but uh, to anybody that's seen my content, it's always the slingshot right now. But like I said, I, I've been thinking about it more and, and that whole, you know, at the beach, I, I used to like pick up rocks and shoot them with the slingshot and try to like hit a rock with another rock out of the air and uh just for fun playing around but that means like remembering my slingshot with me and as a pocket friendly or even necklace or bracelet the the actual sling is uh so much more viable you know and you could even latch it to the top of a staff or make a staff in any situation and fling things like that so I i'm i'm pretty excited to get back into it i think we are even going to launch maybe um uh, in a couple months or for Christmas, like a little adventure pouch kit that we have uh, coming up, like a little container. And I'm actually thinking of using our laser to print a pouch for it and uh, with some uh, like a 150 paracord on it or something mm -hmm. or a 90 pound paracord, something like or micro cord for a kind of lightweight, like basically beach walking sling for flinging rocks and having some fun with them. I'm going to try really hard not to nerd out on the paracord comment because uh, 
usually people say paracord and all they ever know is 550 paracord and my absolute favorite is 425 okay i knew there was some other stuff and i found i like the micro cord i've never used you say 425 yeah 425 is slightly smaller and a little bit stiffer than the 550 cord yeah it's it's my absolute favorite for sling making nice i'll have to check that out because i was looking for something different and i hate paracord itself the original paracord it was way it's way too gummy for a sling i i feel the same way it's 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 squishy it's paracord is absolutely great for what it's good for uh but if you're using a single cord uh, then the 550 cord for me it it whistles a lot and it's it's got a very distinct sound to it and it's it kind of just sloshes around inside the the sheath more than I like. Yeah, I know I had tried some in the past, and that I'm, I'm guessing it was that uh, or something 425 or something. Here I said I wasn't going to nerd out on it. Here we go. <laughs> and ordering on Amazon right now. You know, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you were saying that one of the things that you've noticed with slings is that it's very sort of portable and easy to carry around in a pocket. Like, how do you think that that would help it in sort of a survival situation? You did the uh, TV series alone and uh, you have some experience <laughs> in that sort of area. So how do you think it would uh, sling would sort of work as a survival type weapon? I don't know. That's a hard one because there's there's two aspects to that. Like it's it's like one of the few weapons that you could make that could be really powerful and and like and really do some damage with like rabbits and stuff and even bigger with a bigger stone and maybe a staff sling and like take out a deer, you know, or take them out enough that you could go over and dispatch them and assuming you're in another world that we don't exist in right now or not very easily where there's lots of game. You know, it's like you can't you just can't whip up a a slingshot. You know, I don't care. I mean, how many of your jacket pull cords and things like that that you break down, you're not going to be whipping up, uh, you know, enough elastics out of your underwear band. You know, it to, you'd have to like disassemble your underwear band completely, you know, and like pull every rubber fiber separate from the fabric. Yeah. And and like braid them and. Even then, I don't know how great of a slingshot it would make. It, but a sling, I mean, you could pull the shoelaces out of your shoe and make a sling. And if you were able to become accurate with it, you know, you could definitely take a rabbit or birds or, you know, pretty much anything. We uh, just recently, in fact, uh, earlier today, posted, just this morning, posted an episode on hunting with a sling where... Basically, what you were saying is pretty much what we the same conclusions we came to. So that's quite encouraging. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like I I think that's that's true that the sling does have that over a slingshot. That I mean, I've made slings out of stinging nettle fiber, um, and that does take some time. But if I was to make it a bit quicker, I would be able to get a perfectly usable sling in maybe half a day of work, if that, uh, depending on the time of year and where I am and all those sorts of aspects. But yeah, that is uh, definitely a plus for the sling over the slingshot. Yeah. Literally like, it, yeah, like, like a naked and afraid situation. Like that was before I went on alone. I watched that and they were, they were always, you know, they're bringing their one item and uh, that they only have like a knife or a fire starter or a little pot and stuff. And it's like, like the only thing that they could bring at weapon wise it, like they could they could make from dog bane or like you said stinging nettle they could make a sling even the pouch right you could yeah. do one of those those braided pouches that's just meant to create it with two you know a little sp- split in it and uh yeah somebody that was very capable could do that pretty easily whether or not they're in a place with enough game that's going to hold still at that short of a range you kind of need some until you're good, you're going to need some dumb game like, you know, pheasant or grouse that just <laughs> they like think they're invisible and they just sit there. But yeah, I think that's that's the real challenge with the sling is that it could take years to really get accurate with it. And there there are people out there who start when they're two years old who are really good 
but it's not the sort of thing that a uh, you know amateur survivalist living in a suburban city is just going to pick up and then go off into the woods and and feed themselves with. Yeah, and it's a very it. I mean, it kind of give yourself away when you use it, right? I mean, for game wise, because like you you whip it, and even with a single whip, you're like comes around, you're flapping your arm, and that's usually the kind of motion that makes whatever you're hunting run for the hills. <laughs> You know, right. Well, and I think it's probably time for us to have that that rant that we talked about in the last episode kick, which is uh, the confusion between slings and slingshots just in the terminology of it. Uh, They are such different animals in terms of just how they function and what they do. And yet the language is so confusing about it. Um, But, yeah, you're exactly right. A, A sling stores its energy in the form of momentum. I mean, it's natural state. It's it's loaded, ready to fire state is in motion. Uh, and a slingshot, you can actually hold very still before you shoot. So just a completely different from a physics perspective, a, you know, biomechanics perspective, it's a completely different thing, even though sling and slingshot sound very similar to each other. They're, I would argue that they're nothing alike. Yeah, I, I would always get people... You know, like, oh, oh, you're Fowler. You shoot the slingshot just like David and Goliath. And David, and he, and like, no, no. I'm like, <laughs> don't, I know you want to identify with what I'm doing and things, but like, no. <laughs> like, David didn't have, you know, pure latex to, yeah, you know, make. No vulcanized rubber plant down at the, the field. Yeah. Cities. I mean, maybe they did, but I'm pretty sure they didn't make that kind of latex back then. You know, it's like. <laughs> He he just had a sling, and that was part of that whole uh, sling versus slingshot video, which I we went into with, you know, and and my friend was is pretty convinced that David used the staff sling because they talks about how he went out against Goliath with the staff and the sling in his hand, and that he probably put the two together and so he could really whip one out, and uh, you know, and I played around with it and found that this you know taking your regular sling, slipping one end on the end of the staff. I, I could be quite a bit more accurate, you know, in like seconds compared to the sling, which, you know, takes, uh, there's a bit of a learning curve there. Yes, there is. Yeah, and I found that as well with the, with the staff sling that you, it's a lot easier to be accurate with the staff sling than with a hand sling. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely true. <laughs> you get that, you get that single, um, uh, I think of it like there's like a when on the staff sling because you're whipping overhead, so you you have that single line of accuracy when you vertically you're you're always going to be on pretty easily, but then you just got to get the release point for up and down. Whereas if you're trying to hit anything with you know with a sling that's not on the staff, you kind of either you're whipping like softball kind of underhand. But then it leaves you with like an arcing trajectory, and it's harder to hit things in a certain plane. It's a three dimensional problem for sure. Yeah, and so if you whip over your head horizontally, then you're you have to become accurate in two planes. Yeah, but man, that you can you can do some awesome stuff. Yeah, that's that's the thing that I both love and hate about the sling is that it is the most unconstrained launching mechanism that you could come up with, right? I mean, you can you can launch your projectile uh, from you know above or below or to the side, and then you can actually independently cause the projectile to spin in other directions. So you can do weird curveballs and things like that that you couldn't do with most other launchers, unless you know, I guess uh, James Jean with a uh, with a bow. Oh might, yeah, jeez. Uh, might argue that. Yeah, he could curve them. Yeah. I mean, I suppose with the right um rock and stuff. On purpose, I tried in the past to like purposely curve rocks and things and uh, with the slingshot. It's not that easy to do accurately. It usually has something to do with the shape and size of the rock. And mm-hmm. it's not something you can put into the pouch just right and and flick just right to get it to happen. So I've seen Jorg Sprague, uh, apologies if I mispronounce his name, but uh, I've seen him actually put a twist on the bands to rifle his shots. Does that, is that something you can do? I think that's probably true-ish, but more of a gimmick. Okay. You know? It's not something you do on purpose on a normal... Yeah. Like I, I, I wonder that it... I don't think that the speed in which he would twist the bands and shoot would make a difference. And if anything, 
it probably throws off the accuracy because now there's more directions that the pouch is trying to bring itself to true. And then mm-hmm. it's maybe not releasing coming out of the pouch as cleanly as it could. And you never know when that that rotation and release and the opening and all that stuff. And if anything, you risk uh, having a return to sender with a slingshot if you're twisting it all up, right? This mm-hmm. Like with a sling, you want it to open cleanly and the ammo to fly out consistently each time. You go twisting that all up, you know, it might not open up. Right. The line might twist around itself as it f- comes free and uh, come back and hit yourself with it, you know? Yeah, well, in, in slinging, people try to try to sling with ball bearings, and usually, especially for beginners, it's re- we recommend against using steel because it's so bouncy. And a slingshot, that's one of the most common types of ammo. And if you hit the forks, it could come right back at you. Usually it doesn't come right back at you. It, co- it like, goes off in a trajectory at some angle. You know, oh, that's that's fair. Close to you, right? Like, like it could go, literally go forty five degrees to the right of you and hit your buddy. You know, so like standing a straight line next to each other is is it, it's safe enough, but it it's usually you know it doesn't it it can go like a foot in front of you, like forty five degrees off to the side, and the same thing with a sling, right? So like, yeah, uh, you're out there flinging stuff, and if you're not going vertically, at least. Uh, I've, I've just, when we were doing it that day, I've seen one or two of them got released and went straight up. Yep. Yeah. You know, cause you're kind of going vertically. If you're going over your head to the side, who knows where they could come out <laughs> until you know what you're doing. Well, so there's a, there's a member on the, the slinging forum who, uh, is a very good singer. I won't mention his name cause it uh, doesn't matter here, but he, he had a misfire where a rock went up and behind him at a Renaissance fair and actually hit somebody who was mounted on a horse and knocked the guy off his horse who was like, you know, dozens of yards behind him. So that that's one of the problems with the sling is that nowhere is safe if you uh, if you actually yeah. slip out accidentally. Yeah, slipping out accidentally or get stuck in the pouch for an extra second, I guess. Mm-hmm. I had that one time with um, one pouch, which it was known as a butterfly pouch, where there was there's basically two gaps on each side right near the um, attachment points and um it was really it was my fault because that sort of style pouch is best for using with a tennis ball or something and i was using like a small rock just because that was what was available and i was like oh i'll try it out it got caught in between right where the release cord was attached ripped the entire pouch apart and the stone went flying i don't even know where so <laughs> yeah you have to be careful with this with slings and slingshots but um yeah <laughs> It can it can definitely have disastrous effects if you're not careful. All right, so um, I've got a list here. I want to see, uh, the, nominally, this episode is uh, supposed to be sling versus slingshot, so I, I want to see if we can do a little more direct comparison between the two. And I, I tried to do some research on the slingshot, but I'm definitely not as up to speed as you are, Fowler, uh, of course, obviously. Uh, but I'm just going to go down a list and uh, tell me sling or slingshot here. Power. That's a hard one. Because there is, there's. It comes down to speed and then uh, sort of. Yeah, the there's like mass. It's speed and weight of the trajectory. It, it's like, it's, you know, you can make a slingshot that shoots a really heavy piece of steel or lead that's just. It's going to, power wise, it's going to be pretty darn powerful. That's It's almost like right down the middle, that one. Okay, that's fair. Uh, well, you know, actually, that that brings up uh, another point. So, something I noticed on on alone is that as people became more and more calorie deprived, some of them couldn't even draw a bow. So they all show up with these all this nice archery equipment, and then they couldn't use it because their muscles just wouldn't do what they needed to do. Yeah. Uh, how does the how does the slingshot kind of fit into that? Yeah, I felt you know towards the end pretty weak, and I kept working. You know. Uh, when I first got there, I wasn't doing too good with it, you know, as far as like, I had only started a little while before and it was like a childhood toy that I loved, but never got good with. And then out there, they wouldn't let me bring a bunch of ammo. So, and I u- brought uh, natural latex bands that were kind of a little bit stiffer. So their stretch ratio wasn't as much. And so I had to shoot and it, and they only let me have like 30 ammo. So I had to shoot rocks. So I, Every day I was practicing with rocks and learning more about rocks, and that's where I learned about trajectory of of a rock. For you know, so the heavier the rock, the straighter it's going to go because the wind's going to take less 
um, impact on it. Mm-hmm. In the end, I did get one bird with my slingshot. There was only like two birds there, and I caught one with my bird trap, and the other ones were all like everywhere else on the lake, and never, you know, they were never close. So it was like kind of frustrating that there was no game and stuff. But so it's like the size of the the rock and things like that makes the biggest difference. Or you know, in a sling, it could be also a shaped lead or or something like that, like they use in the medieval days for war yeah so yeah sorry i i asked you the question about power and then i i took us right off topic immediately there uh okay so i i was looking into a little bit and i think according to the internet which is always right uh the the record for the most energy from a slingshot that was human powered uh was somewhere around uh 100 was it 130 or 230 joules it was uh so Jorg Sprug had uh, had one that was a like a basically a a board with uh several really strong bands and I I want to say it was uh somewhere around 230 joules was the amount of energy he was able to get out of that and um uh, it, it's not an absolute sling is going to have that beat isn't it I I think a sling is going to beat that because um yeah yeah uh just because you can launch such a a large projectile and uh you know the momentum of that is is bigger yeah so i have a i have a friend in Houston who recently uh threw a seven hundred gram rock and i we ran the calculations it went about a football field and uh we calculated it out to be about the same kinetic energy as a thirty eight special yeah and and Jeez. people like to throw out the uh the forty four magnum number uh but they don't actually say it's the same energy they say it's the same quote unquote stopping power, which is really more about momentum uh so i I don't like to use that forty four magnum number because i it was it was misused and abused a lot in uh, a lot of articles a couple of years ago, but we actually do have confirmed cases where a you know, i I don't want to call him an average singer he's good but uh you know, just a normal guy was able to get as much energy as as you'd get out of the muzzle of a 38 special uh, with just a freaking huge rock. I would argue that that's one where the sling wins. Um, however, if you want to sling something accurately, uh, I I just saw yesterday that uh, somebody was able to to go through and through on a soda can at 400 feet with a slingshot, and you're not going to do that with a sling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I also saw that you had your video, Fowler, on um, we did the Robin Hood shot with a slingshot. Yeah, yeah. Splitting the arrow. Yeah. So. That'd be a fun one to try to do with the uh, sling. Yeah. That would take it. That'd probably take me a lifetime. Uh, you just need a lot more <laughs> arrows downrange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe if the arrow was like as big as the target. So for power, then it almost feels like. Uh, so as you get bigger, the sling's going to win, right? But if as you get smaller in trajectory size, the slingshot's going to win. Oh, absolutely. Because it's going to be able to impart more speed for the smaller size of the of the shot, where there's like, you can't really sling a, I mean, unless I'm wrong, you can't really sling a, a 3 eighths piece of lead very fast out of a sling. So that's on my bucket list. Um, I, I have a personal goal to break the set, the speed of sound with, uh, with human power out of a sling, Yeah. but you know, it's not happening anytime soon. Nobody's come up with a practical design, but uh, theoretically, if you could get the timing just right, you could actually have effectively a two stage compound sling where you're slinging a sling, which then the second one, uh, accelerates again and launches a much smaller projectile much faster. So, there are some theories that you might be able to do it, but you'd have to have perfect timing and precision unless somebody else is has is able to come up with a design where that actually becomes you know semi practical so so yes, you're right uh right now yeah. that doesn't exist but uh there there are there's some conjecture that it might be possible, but it's a long shot compound sling yeah it, how would that work? Like those guys that twirl the ropes with the knives at the end or something, where you twirl around, then you bring it to a swift stop in the middle of the line, and it flings open at the end or something? Yeah, basically, you have to have a counterweight. So you have something that would be heavy, like like what is, uh, you know, the, the engineer in me says impedance matching with the, the human body, right? The human body is very strong, but also very slow compared to something like a slingshot band. 
And, and so human muscle is really good at moving heavy things relatively slow, but that's, so if you have a counterweight at the end and then a uh, secondary release mechanism, you can actually kind of fold a second sling back toward you. So when you, when you release your release cord, it, it's kind of like uh, unhooking off of a, a trebuchet or a staff sling where it comes off the counterweight and then uh, swings around a second time, but getting the timing of that, you know, every time you add a stage like that, uh, the, the precision required in timing to get it to go the direction you want uh, gets compressed down as well. So you may have to have microsecond precision to actually make that work. <laughs> it's computerized uh, slings. <laughs> Robotic sling. Yeah. You have to, then yeah. now you're cramming batteries into your counterweight and it, it just gets ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Listeners at home, um, I I have tried to rein in his uh, physics love. It seems I failed on this episode, so but we'll let him have this one. Uh, oh, I won't give an inch, too much. give an inch, and you're in trouble, kid. <laughs> so yeah, I'll I'll give you that one. I think on on smaller ammo, if we're doing an apples to apples comparison, the slingshot definitely wins that. Uh, how about distance? I I cheated and and picked the ones that I think the sling is going to win on first. We'll we'll give the slingshot a, a, some easier ones in a minute. Distance, huh? I mean, that's a that's another questionable one. That I don't know because um, I've shot in a long, long distances with the slingshot. Because you can put a smaller trajectory, you could smaller item, right? And you could shoot it, you know, pretty far. And I've gotten it uh, without making an even fancy slingshot, three hundred yards across the lake. That's impressive. So it takes a lot of work for a slinger to hit 300 yards. Yeah. And a lot of work. Um, so, so I, I think on distance, you're right. The slingshot probably can hit longer distances easier. There, uh, the world record, uh, according to the Guinness book of world records is, uh, 477 meters with a, with a sling, but it was kind of a weird one. Cause it was basically a string with a, a hooked dart, so it was it was not even really a sling. It was just a a string and a dart. They were slinging a dart with the sling then, huh? Yeah, but the yeah. thing weighed like four ounces. So they had the momentum to cut through the air resistance. And then they had the fins for stability. And it was basically cheating in every way possible to to get that distance. That's not a normal distance for a Almost, sling. I bet you they could still do that with a sling with an egg-shaped weight of, you know possibly yeah to the right person and the right length and some getting some really good timing with the old spin and you know, just kind of like they do the shot put for the uh, the those whatever you know what i mean those yeah. guys that sling those weights with the lines on them yeah um yeah, yeah like you mean like the hammer throw, throw? Yeah. yeah is that what it is hammer yeah, throw the hammer throw is the the really heavy one um you know, I I love the hammer throw as a slinger just because if you look at the amount of kinetic energy involved, uh, it's it's like four thousand joules for an Olympic hammer throw thrower. They're not throwing you know a football field even, but the amount of energy that the human body puts into a mass and launches in a short period of time is just unfathomable. Yeah, uh, I mean that's that's like hunting rifle territory in terms of how much kinetic energy. It's again not an apples to apples comparison because it's heavy and slow versus uh, fast and light from a rifle, but it it kind of shows you the upper limit of what the human body can generate in terms of of power. There there has been various claims of like incredibly long ranges, but they've been usually measured from the release velocity and then sort of calculating that as the like to work out the distance, like angle of release and then um, the speed. The biggest problem has been actually being able to verify it because finding the space to safely sling something, you know, hundreds and hundreds of meters is not easy. Like I did some slinging on a frozen lake and I think I managed like 109 meters. So not great, really. 109 paces. I don't know. I, I, I just sort of paced it out. So I don't think that even counts as meters, but it's really difficult to find those sorts of areas where you can do it and be able to find where the ammo lands because that's, that's kind of the, the main way that you can prove it is actually showing where it landed. And yeah, that's, that's not easy if you're using some tiny little piece of lead or something. So that's the big barrier. Well, and telling the difference between a, a bounce and roll versus the initial hit. And there's, there's a lot yeah. to it. 
And that's true no matter what you're launching from. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you an easy one. Accuracy. Accuracy is going to be the slingshot. <laughs> I, I, I can't argue. Yeah, that. I think, yeah. <laughs> so, friend of the show, uh, Iron Goober, uh, has hit a match head, but it took a lot of work. And uh, it almost struck the match, but I think he was using a ball that was covered in in strike paper. And we got a little, he got a little smoke out of it after a lot of work, but uh, you make that one look a lot, e- a lot easier on the slingshot. So I, I don't think we can argue that the, the sling in terms of uh, at least in terms of the amount of work to get the same accuracy slingshot wins hands down on that pinpoint accuracy. I don't doubt that you can't get, you can get good with the sling and, you know, whack a bird, you know, just as often and as somebody with a slingshot probably under the right circumstances, but that you're just going to be whacking them and then fin- running over and finishing them off. Whereas a slingshot's going to put it right through the eye and take them out or something like that when it's hunting. Yeah. Now, one thing with the sling that is uh, kind of unusual is that it, it seems and I, I got to be careful making this claim, but you know, I'm just going to go <laughs> for it. Um, because the sling is in motion it seems like it's easier sometimes to be accurate with a moving target with the sling than it is even to, to just sling at a static target. Like moving targets seem to come more naturally to slinging. And maybe it's just because the sling is so inaccurate already that you get a hit and you feel like you're, you're doing really well. But uh, yeah, be- I think because the sling is already in motion, there's something about moving targets that feels more natural than a static one. Yeah, have, have you done much? Uh... I know there's been people with the bow with the bow that are like that, you know, where like James always has the hardest time with the uh, with targets that are just sitting still, and uh, like, but he flings something in the air like an aspirin, and he can shoot it shoot it out of the air, <laughs> you know, right. no no problem. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure you're using a different part of the brain for moving targets. Yeah, it's sort of instinctual. Uh, yeah, aiming isn't it? The it's kind of. I think I think that there is something to that that moving targets are easier, um, which I think I I think I need to do more moving target <laughs> shooting because I'm really not very accurate with static targets. So maybe I should try try throwing them around a bit. <laughs> All right, how about uh, uh, rapid fire? Sling oh, or slingshot? slingshot. Yeah, uh, I think you're right there too. How what's the fastest rate of fire you've gotten? Probably forty. One maybe shots a minute. Yeah, that's forty one. That's, that's wow. quicker than a sling. Yeah. <laughs> that's more than double what I think your best would be with the sling. I mean, that wasn't trying. That wasn't trying to be accurate or anything. That was like you know just shooting at like a cardboard backdrop in my slingshot range, but just you know having probably like thirty pieces of ammo or twenty five pieces of ammo in my hand and just timing myself and just being like ping 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 as fast as I can, you know, and then picking up one more scoop and then ping 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 and then I counted all the holes in the cardboard. So Yeah, I mean still I think you it's hard to argue that a sling could ever be that fast because uh, it works on momentum. You have to build up momentum by swinging the pouch around every time you reload it there's that wind up that you can't not do. Whereas a slingshot, as soon as you stretch the bands, uh, all the energy is, is in the system. And then you just let go. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess if you're going really for speed, you can like be pulling the bands back as you're loading and like there's sort of those easier ways to sort of shortcut with a slingshot than I think with a sling, like you really can't be swinging the pouch around your head and, and loading at the same time. Um, that's, that's not going to end well for anyone. <laughs> well, we can't have an episode without a little bit of uh, implied blood and guts. So how about uh, shooting from behind a shield? Shooting from behind a shield, huh? Yeah, that's going to be the slingshot too, I guess. Right? Well, well, I don't know. It depends on whether you have to hold the shield. right? If, you're, if you have to hold your own shield, then that, that could be a little awkward with a slingshot because you need both hands. And if you're just talking about a wall, is a sl- then you can shoot from behind a shield with either one of them, but that's true. Yeah, I think yeah. I think if it's if it's one handed, that's the only time that a sling is gonna gonna win. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in that aspect, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of a shield as like just anything that's shielding you. So yeah, there's there's like no way that you can 
even shoot a slingshot one-handed. Well, you might be able to get it you in know? your teeth. I mean, and... there, there are a couple people out there that shoot with their <laughs> teeth, but I mean, that's, you know, and there's even, I'm making one right now for one of the girls that was on the Go Big show with me that uh, she can shoot with her feet. But I mean, that's, that's a rarity. <laughs> right. Well, and yeah, if you, if you're using your feet, you're, it's probably not a very good tactical uh, position. If you're having to engage your feet for shooting and hold a shield with you, you might, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, that could be awkward. <laughs> a little awkward. <laughs> All right. So, so how, about, how about shooting with your feet, shooting with your feet, slingshot wins right there. You know, that's <laughs> true. I, that's true. Yeah. We'll have to add that to the <laughs> list. <laughs> You know, we're going to have to try shooting with the shooting with feet with a sling. Uh, somebody's got, you know, how'd you do that? I guess somebody figured that. Remember that old toy that you put around your ankle and you jump while the other one, and it, that's a, it was kind of like a, yeah, I do I know, remember I, that. I'm, I'm yeah. a child of the eighties. So I, I remember that. So you probably could somebody that was like, you know, uh, that's ridiculous. Though. <laughs> well, that, that's never stopped us before. You really shouldn't be giving him ideas. Like yeah. this is, this is dangerous. Like, <laughs> It's gonna be a lot of broken ankles. I, I did invent the uh, the kung fu meteor hammer slinging style, so it, it might be similar to that. So if you have a if you have a long enough sling, you can actually wrap it around your knee, and then you kick out, and it it releases. It actually kind of works like a compound sling, where you're you're shortening the length of the sling, and then you kick out your knee. It slides off your knee and accelerates very fast uh, in some usually some random direction, <laughs> but it almost sort of works. <laughs> So you might oh, be able wow. you might be able to do something like that with uh, around the ankle. It, it'll it'll make some good uh, internet content at least. So we'll have to try that. <laughs> All right. Um, so ease of use, I think that one's uh, the the answer is obvious. Yeah. You know, so I I actually just got one of your uh, your green sparrow slingshots in the mail a couple days ago, Fowler, and uh, yeah. I, I took a few shots with it. Uh, I'm not a complete novice with a slingshot, but I haven't shot one since I was a kid. I used to play paintball with slingshots, which was absolutely the best way to play paintball in the world, by the way. A uh, lot of fun. But uh, that, that's a story for another time. But uh, yeah, so I used to shoot slingshots a lot at moving targets. But, uh, you know, I took a few pot shots and then I watched your video on how to shoot a slingshot and suddenly started hitting the uh, the target. So there's a shout out for your, both your slingshot and your instruction and training method are excellent. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. It's it's pretty easy to pick up that way. As far as like, I've taught a lot of people and I, I know there's no way I could teach somebody to like start knocking down cans in like 20 minutes, you know, the, the way I could with a slingshot. Yeah. The sling is just, the sling is such a different type of accuracy that you need. It's, it's really about, I mean, you still need to have timing and, you know, those sorts of aspects for a slingshot. But with a sling, it, it really comes down to milliseconds as to whether you hit or if you're two meters off. So there is that sort of that sort of difference between the two. It's it's pretty, pretty big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Magic can be kind of frustrating, too, for some people Like you get into it and it's like you kind of like spend time with it. And if you don't know what you're doing, you know, the same thing with a slingshot, like. You know, you're using rocks with a slingshot and they just never go where you want to. People, I, you know, I hung it up in the past, you know, when I was a kid. It's like, there's just no way. with the, Using a wrist rocket, I was never going to be accurate with it. So you start with a sling and you start doing, you know, you don't know what you're doing. And it's like, it feels, it could feel pretty daunting to like break that, um, that barrier of starting to get some accuracy out of it. I, I feel like I was very lucky because... Um... I think it was literally my second throw with a sling. Um, I managed to hit the target I was aiming at. This um, it was this like small piece of like particle board. I think it was. I hit it and it split in two and flew in two different directions. It was complete luck that I hit it at all. But I've been chasing that the high of that <laughs> of that hit ever since, basically, because it was it was amazing to see how how much power you can get with a sling and how you can just absolutely annihilate anything that you're aiming at if you can get that accuracy so that's definitely a double-edged sword because on the one hand it's really hard but on the other hand uh that's a challenge that you can that kind of becomes addictive because you get that little dopamine high when you do get the hit yeah and the harder it is the more of a high you get when you're successful that's true yeah i always i always compare swinging to golf in that respect because you're you're whacking a little ball 
uh, with a flat piece of metal and trying to get it to go hundreds of yards in a precise uh, with a precise placement. And the sling is very similar to that, only instead of hitting it, you're swinging it around your head and then trying to very precisely time your release. Yeah, there are a lot of sort of similarities with a few other sports where you have that, where the the sort of the difficulty is kind of what's attractive about it is that it it kind of it's it, it makes you chase it in a way. So yeah. Yeah, but but a lot of people have given up on the sling because they want that success, and it, it if they don't get that early, uh, if they don't get addicted early enough, then then yeah, it's easy to get discouraged. You know, when I was looking at the sling versus slingshot video, and I looked up some people, there was one guy, and they said like he was the champion and stuff, and there was a lot of videos from I don't know where it was. I want to say it was somewhere more like Turkey or things like that, where it was more of a habit for them. And they did a lot of it. And I was pretty unimpressed with his level of accuracy. You know, like they set something up and they were recording his hit speed and it took quite a few shots for him to hit stuff. I I don't know if there's better uh, resources out there for people to see that. Has anybody made a really good how to sling? and, And is, I mean, is there like a master out there? Not really. That's that's one of the things we're we're hoping to. That's part of why we even started this podcast. We're hoping to kind of grow the slinging culture and push the limits of what's possible. But uh, slinging culture is thousands of years old, and there there are traditions, and the there's a lot of mixed information about what does and doesn't work, and what is and isn't possible in terms of accuracy. I mean, you, there's the story in the Bible of 700 left-handed Benjamites that says they can uh, sling a stone at a hair and not miss. So so if you want to take that literally, that's pretty good accuracy, assuming that that hair is some reasonable distance away. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you look at modern day slinging culture, accuracy is not anywhere close to what most other shooting sports uh, are at. I mean, the the target for most slinging competition is a 18 inch uh, metal disc that's on a uh, what is it 100 centimeters so it's a what is it it's it's like a four foot by four foot board with an 18 inch bullseye yeah uh, that you're you're slinging at from 20 meters away yeah so yeah. I mean, you you give that target to somebody with a hunting rifle and they're gonna get bored on the first shot yeah so yeah I mean, just looking at what's considered competitive in slinging, you know, you get excited about hitting an 18 inch circle 20 meters away. That's yeah. It doesn't speak well for the potential accuracy, but the flip side, and I think you talk about this a little bit in your, how to shoot a slingshot content is if you aim, if you aim for a smaller target, you're going to get more accurate as well. So part of it may be that we're not trying to hit a small enough target in the competitions in the slinging world. Right. They want that big gong, and they got to make it easy for everybody if you're going to do something like in a bigger competition, yeah, I guess. Sure so. It's trying to attract more people and make it fun. Yeah, go for volume of hits and, and against another person with a bigger target and uh, and knock the other contestants out versus, you know, like who can hit a can, you know, a soda can or something. Yeah. Well, and it's it's probably like the difference between watching a three gun competition and watching a uh, a long distance shooting competition, right? Long distance shooting is highly technical and very boring to watch. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're doing a three gun competition, then there's lots of action, lots of motion, lots of shooting. The targets are all relatively close and relatively easy to hit. It's just about the pressure and the and and doing it fast. So I think that uh, the the slinging competition is is trying to strike that balance of being attractive to lots of people, being inclusive and fun, and also still being a challenge. But yeah, I think that there's definitely limits that could be pushed in the slinging world and in the slinging culture to improve accuracy more than we have now. All right, uh, let's see what's next on my list. So ease of use, I think hands down, slingshot wins that. We already talked about ease of manufacture. Uh, I think the sling wins that one. Yeah, for sure. Just because you have to have a uh, vulcanized rubber plant in in the woods with you if you're going to make make slingshots from nature. Yeah. <laughs> I, not that you couldn't maybe do that over a few years or something, but it sounds like a lot of work to get a slingshot yeah, out. Even... Probably better off doing farming or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, as well with that, like um, talking about weather conditions. I know that here in Finland 
for one, you're never going to be able to get a rubber plant to grow here. Uh, it's just not going to work. So that puts the slingshot out straight away in these conditions. And then even if you do have the rubber ready made, they just uh, it doesn't work that great in the cold. And when it can get down to like minus 25 over here and yeah, the sling is going to win on that one just because the slingshot bands are not going to like being that cold for any amount of time. So there is that aspect as well, that weather conditions and climate can like affect temperature. Them. Yeah. yeah. That's true. So um, yeah, my understanding of the slingshot, the what's going on in the slingshot band is that uh, basically there's a thermal element to the energy storage. And Sorry, I'm nerding out again, but uh, if you dissipate that heat before you let go of the band, you, you stretch it out and... In fact, some people get more power out of their slingshot by heating it up. I know that's uh, that's one of the favorite tricks of uh, the slingshot channel of Jörg Sprague oh, yeah. is uh, heating it up. So if you do the opposite of that, if you cool off your bands, then you're going to lose power. Yeah, like uh, when I, I shot one under the water, like the resistance of the water and the coolness, and like it just takes all the energy out of the bands and they take forever to relax back to the full, you know, length uh sh- the shortened length so it's like it just it kills the uh the the shot and the, the shot literally lands behind you instead of in front of you so it's almost like you'd have to go to a much heavier ammo for that situation and it, it starts to look more sling like because if if you can't release that fast then you could just more slowly accelerate a heavier projectile and it might work better but then again you're you're still trying to shoot a slingshot underwater yeah, yeah, that's what like the kind of like the darts there, you know, for uh, spear fishing. You know, they they have a heavy band, and just to be able to do the same thing. But um, that's something a slingshot would win at, you could, <laughs> or a sling dart thing could win at underwater. You could shoot a sling dart. I I dare you to try to shoot a sling underwater. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> I told you, you really don't want to be giving him ideas. Like this is this is not going to end well. <laughs> All right, so so here's a here's a different one. Um, hunting a deer, and I'm going to open this up a little bit. And you know, so so we're going to allow a sling bow and a uh, staff sling in this one. Oh yeah, well, uh, the sling bow would win for sure. But uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with the uh staff sling for hunting a deer i think well in in our hunting episode we talked about how there is an account of one person killing a roe deer using uh, a hand sling and uh, the source that we got it from is quite reliable i think i think we can believe them (laughs) but there, there is some evidence as well for sort of larger animals like up to coyote deer sort of size being killed with a hand sling as well so that is the sling has so much energy behind it if you're using a big enough, heavy enough rock that you can take those bigger animals as well. So in in some ways, I think that, I mean, not against the sling bow, but I think slingshot, it definitely has that, that you can go for smaller animals as well as bigger ones as well, which you might not be able to do with a slingshot without using a sling bow, without yeah. using arrows. And the arrows, there's only like one account I know of, I don't know, the guy... Uh, shoots giant pieces of steel ammo that's like inch and a quarter or inch and a half, and he is he's supposedly gotten a deer with it and stuff from a tree stand, you know, without the sling bow aspect, just big steel ammo beans them in the head and kills them. Um, I I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I can see how that'd be possible with an inch and a quarter ball bearing sure yeah i see it being possible but it's just not yeah it's not your everyday occurrence you know i mean you'd have to practice a lot more for that well and and the deer stand might actually need to be part of the slingshot at that yeah yeah basically you've added the deer stand just so you can get the right angle on it i mean you could do it from a blind on the ground and stuff too i guess but it's like you, you need that overhead almost you know, so that you can bean it straight down to do your thing. Because it from the side, I don't know if that would actually, you know, be the same result. Yeah. And stuff. Whereas a sling, you know, you could put a good sized rock in there, and you know, and the game is you can take it out a little bit more. Yeah. As you get bigger and bigger in game, the sling's just gonna win. 
Yeah, we're sort of talking about that as well. There is sort of like different lower ends and higher ends for the sort of size of animal you can go for. Because, I mean, you might be able to take out a very small bird with a sling as well, but whether you'd be able to eat what's left is another thing as well. So that's also something to uh, take into consideration, I guess. Is we had the one story of someone hitting a rabbit and the only thing being left was their head and then the legs and the entire middle of the rabbit was gone <laughs> because the sling had just ripped it apart, basically. So Wow. So that's kind of the thing is uh, how much you can u- you can use a sling to kill a lot of different animals but whether you'd be able to actually use the animal afterwards is maybe another thing all right so what else do we have on our uh, sling versus sling shot list here um how about going up against a knight in armor oh yeah sling's gonna win that one for sure right well, i guess it depends on your precision right i mean the the classic david and goliath story uh you know, some people have argued that David was able to, or well, it says he hit him right, right in the forehead. Some people have argued that he hit him, but between the armor, I think uh, us as slingers would argue that the armor doesn't matter because the transfer of momentum is good enough even through the armor. Right. Yeah. And I, a slingshot, unless it's like that same weird one that the, you know, that one guy has a super powerful and it literally kind of like the Mongolians would there really powerful bows you know they would shoot the uh horse bow with the since of being a kid you know that has 180 pounds or the english and the 180 pound bows you know and it, you just can't shoot those without mad skills from practicing from use the youth to be build that kind of muscle mm-hmm. yeah it's a rare situation that the slingshot would ever be able to defeat the an armored knight <laughs> Yeah, I, I think the only way you could do it is with a very, very precise shot that bypasses the armor. Yeah. Yeah. And even then, it's like, yeah, I don't know that you're going to shoot somebody in the temple with any sort of a slingshot that that could really kill them or something. I mean, I, I, mean, I suppose... You, you might ruin their morning, but, I mean... It, yeah, or you might you just might... tick them off and then they're going to come after you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I think siege warfare is kind of along the same lines. You probably, if if you're going into battle, um, I think I'd probably rather have a gun. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) If you have to choose between a sling and a slingshot, that's a tough one because, you know, it's accuracy or power. I don't know. Just run away. Yeah, the sling. Yeah. Because, yeah, you just want the sling. I wouldn't want to take a slingshot into any sort of battle situation. I mean, the only way you could use it for self-defense or battle situation is maybe like, you know, red pepper paintballs or something where you could speed and stuff like that might play in a, play in the accuracy. And so you'd be able to use that to uh, take take out a number of people fairly quickly. But in a self-defense situation, they, they wouldn't be down for the count. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Like in terms of sheer stopping power. Just because you can throw a much larger projectile, a a sling would be preferable. But honestly, nothing is preferable because, you know, if if you're trying to defend your life, you really got to hit what you're aiming at. Yeah, yeah. That's about it for what I've got on the sling versus slingshot list. Uh, oh, playing fetch with your dog. I think that that one was another cheat to to give the sling an advantage. Don't want to shoot your slingshot for your dog. <laughs> well, yeah, you're probably not going to fit a tennis ball in there. No, be a special slingshot. Yeah, I think Nerf used to have one of those. Yeah, probably thirty years ago, there was yeah. a and it. I think, in fact, I think I had one in the nineties, and it probably shot about ten feet. Yeah, they have those water balloon ones, slingshots that take two, three people. There you go. That's true. You can launch some pretty cool water balloons fairly easily, but I mean, you could just as easily do that with a sling. I imagine the right sling, you could. Kind of. I have thought about that. I I think you'd you probably need quite thick uh, balloons for that yeah. because there's quite a lot of friction with it being released, like rolling off the release cord. So I I, I still haven't tried slinging water balloons, but I think I, I'm expecting like a lot of a lot of them just to burst as you're releasing. I have tried it, and that's exactly what happens. Okay, there we go then. <laughs> Maybe with the right microfiber pouch, you know. Maybe. And, uh, and mm-hmm. underinflated, but then they're not going to pop so easily when you hit somebody, and it's going to suck. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's kind of the problem. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, okay. So 
there's there's been a lot of talk in the slinging community about trying to come up with a game where people are actually slinging at each other and people have played around with it i mean you don't want to use something like tennis balls they hurt too much um what's this tennis balls would be great <laughs> i'd play i'd play I think tennis balls could you could get away with if you if you had like maybe a face mask just in case but I think yeah, for the most football, part, well, like a, like the hockey helmet with the grill, right? Yeah, yeah, that that would probably work. Maybe like a cheesy chest plate or something would be kind of nice. Yeah, maybe just even just a a thick jacket or something like that. But a tennis ball still transfers enough momentum. You'd feel a, a pretty good thud if you get hit oh, with yeah. a with a hard shot. So I've uh, I've tried slinging these little uh, wool dryer balls. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are those are about tennis ball size, and those are a lot softer hitting. They don't go as far, they don't go as fast because they catch a lot of wind. And I think that's just about the ideal thing to to throw at somebody because it's bigger than an eye socket. You're not going to take out an eye, and you still feel a good thud, but it's not really going to uh, hurt someone too bad. Yeah, you almost need a custom Nerf ball that's good size, but it has a weight in the middle. I don't even know if you need the weight. Um, so one way you can get around that with a sling, if if your ammo doesn't weigh enough, you can actually add weight to the pouch. Oh yeah, and yeah. You can get the you can get the pouch moving fast just because of the weight of the pouch, and but then you're not sending that all that mass downrange. And I've actually done slinging with uh, empty plastic Easter eggs that way. No kidding. And you you can sling a, a very lightweight projectile, and un, until the wind takes all the energy out of it, you can you can get a decent sling out of it. Uh, and that does work with a with a weighted pouch. I still really want to want to try like a sort of sling war between like two groups. I think that would be really fun. I, I think everybody who likes slinging does. So on the slingshot side, though, uh, as a kid, we I used to I was too poor to actually go to the the paintball ranges. So we'd get a bunch of friends and go off into the middle of nowhere, and we we'd just go down to I think at the time Walmart would sell buckets of paintballs so we'd buy a slingshot some painter's goggles and a couple hundred paintballs and we would go uh you know battle all night or all all evening several hours just on a few hundred paintballs with a slingshot and that was a lot of fun i have uh, great memories of that as a kid and i say kid it was probably middle school early high school so so slingshot in terms of you know pretending to try to kill your friends I think the slingshot probably wins in just that it's a little easier to do it without uh, customizing, without having to reinvent everything. Yeah, yeah. My favorite part about uh, the paintball with slingshots was just that the the tactics were so different than than actual paintballing. Because when you when you go paintballing at a range, a lot of times the person with the most expensive paintball gun and the most paint is going to win because they just sit behind cover and pull the trigger all day. Yeah. Uh, but you go out there with slingshots, you take one shot, you're out of ammo. So you've got to move a lot more. You got to do a lot more running. And, you know, if, if somebody shoots at you and misses, then you can rush them and, and get a good hit on them from up close. And so they have to think about it and be, be pretty sure they're going to hit you before they take the shot. I think for both slingshots and slings, that's one thing that kind of puts it above for guns and things like that. For me, at least is that I feel that it does come down more to the person using it than the, thing you're using like i can take one of the slings that i've got that's like that was a natural tibetan sling made in tibet and uh you know it's very decorative and made of wool and it's very fancy and then i can take one that i made out of you know basically anything you can just like take some scrap leather and chuck some cords on it and they can throw pretty much the same like it comes down a lot more to the person using it than than what it is and i think with slingshots as well i mean there's i mean having a handle that or like the fork actually fitting your hand and you know being comfortable and all those things definitely help but in the end it's how you pull it back and having those anchor points and stuff like that so if i've always felt that with sling and and slingshots there's a bit more sort of you're a bit more in tune with what you're doing than just sort of holding the gun and pulling a trigger yeah What's next for Fowler? Let's, uh, is there anything you want to talk about before we go? Oh, uh, just, I don't know. I'm going to have to get the laser working and uh, make some slings, play around with some stuff. There are some templates on uh, slinging.org. Or we, could, we could send you, if you, if you want some ready-made designs that are proven, there's, there's some out there 
uh, on the internet that should be able should be pretty easy to drop right into a uh, laser burner. The inspiration. <laughs> yeah, I've been working on some different pouches for the slingshot, and so I think it shouldn't be too hard to uh, just turn some of those, you know, with a maybe that fold by the tip, so it creates a little bit of a cup, and uh, find the right to try out some of that four twenty paracord and uh, start playing around with the sling some more. Maybe I'll make one that uh, I put on my wrist. Yeah, I think we would we would love to see more sling content coming from uh, from Fowler's Makery and Mischief. Of course, we're uh, that's what we're about. But uh... more opportunities for the sling. You know, it's like with the lower degree of accuracy and time that it takes me to practice it up. Unless I had an opportunity to go somewhere that I could really, I'd love to do a hunt with it. You know, it's like the blowgun and slingshot and other things that I've done in the past. They require a special location. Mm-hmm. Because you can't just, you can't not, in Maine, you can't just hunt with stuff, you know? Like Texas, something like that, if you're on a property owner's property, you could probably get away with, you can get away with using whatever you want for certain game and things like that if they're considered to be a nuisance. Yeah. Um, there's no yeah. there's no way I could uh, get away with even hunting a squirrel with a sling, you know? So, I don't know how accurate I'll ever become with it compared to the slingshot because of the 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 space that I need and the the space to be able to use it to hunt when I could yeah. there's a more viable places where you'll be allowed to hunt with a slingshot so it's unfortunate yeah it's it's a challenge that there's so many limitations on certain things you know well that's that's one of the reasons that I mostly use tennis balls when I sling is I'm in a I'm in San Antonio Texas in the middle of a city and um, you know if I was using yeah. something more dangerous than a tennis ball then I'd be paying for my neighbor's windows a lot yeah yeah. But the the flip side is with a tennis ball or something like that, you I can I can do quite a bit just in my backyard, and I don't have to go to a special location or anything like that to still get that uh, to scratch that itch of wanting to to launch things. Well, Fowler, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, we can't wait to see uh, some sling content uh, coming from you, and yeah. uh, you're welcome back here anytime. Yeah, it's been good talking to you. All right, thanks for having me, guys. Hey, uh, we can cue the outro. Thanks for listening. You can find us online at catchthispodcast.com, on the sling.org forum, on YouTube, and at catch underscore this underscore podcast on Instagram. Music by Wintergarten. Catch you next time.